Colony crashes. The two words that ice pod keepers dread the most. But why do they occur and how do you prevent them from happening? Hopefully by the end of this video, you will have the answers to both of these questions. When you've had an isopod colony breeding for quite a while, you will eventually get a thick layer of frass on the top of the substrate. This frass not only lacks nutrition and does not hold moisture well, but large quantities of it will produce a deadly amount of ammonia, which may cause all of your isopods to die. These sorts of colony crashes are more frequently seen in colonies that house isopods that are very fast breeders, such as Pasalionides prunosus. To minimise the risk of this ever happening, simply mix up your isopod substrate every few months so that the frass does not build up on the top. Larger colonies will need their substrate mixed more frequently. Due to the fact that isopod enclosures require a moist environment, it's not uncommon to find some fungi growing every now and then. Often, these are harmless, but some can be isopod killers. One fatal fungus that has been known to start growing in captive Pacellia scaba, Pacellia levis and Armadillian vulgar colonies is called Lecarniclium sacensae. This specific fungi has been agriculturally used as a biological control agent against plant parasitic nematodes. This fungi can be identified by its small black spores that cover infected isopods, usually connected to one another by web-like strands. Another thing that fancies moist environments is bacteria. One fatal bacteria that is known to infect Pacellia scaba is in the Rickettsia genus. Bacteria in this genus can cause lethargy, decreased appetite and eventually colony death. To avoid colony crashes caused by fungi and bacteria, remove any fruit and vegetable scraps that begin growing mould. Places where mould grows are places where fungi and bacteria will also grow. Seeding your colonies with springtails also helps diminish mould and fungal growth since these invertebrates eat them. They also help aerate the substrate. Mixing around your isopod substrate, just like we mentioned earlier when we talked about frass buildup, is also another way to deter fungi growth. Stirring up the soil breaks down fungal spores, stopping any further growth in its tracks. Speaking of moist environments, if your enclosures are lacking moisture and humidity, your whole colony could potentially die. Being crustaceans, isopods acquire oxygen with gills. These are thin membranous areas on the underside of the body. In order to function, the gills require continuous wetting. So, if your enclosures do not have enough water, your whole colony could essentially dehydrate to death. To ensure that this does not happen, always make sure that the wet side of your colonies do not dry out fully by frequently misting your colonies with water. If you, for whatever reason, cannot do regular mistings of your enclosures, you can always provide your colonies with a carrot. Carrots do not mould as fast as other vegetables, so will provide a safe, long-lasting moisture source for your isopods. On the other hand, providing too much moisture can also lead to a colony crash due to the isopods essentially drowning to death. To make sure this doesn't happen to any of your colonies, make sure you are using a moisture gradient for your enclosures. This means that one side of your enclosure remains moist, while the other half of the enclosure remains relatively dry. This enables your isopods to freely go from one end of the enclosure to the other, depending on how much moisture they need. If you are having trouble with too much moisture building up in your colonies, you may need to include more ventilation to allow more water to evaporate. Another reason as to why sudden colony crashes occur has to do with temperature. Most isopod species thrive at temperatures between 21 to 29 degrees. Sudden drops and peaks outside of this temperature range can cause your colonies to crash. An overlooked cause of colony crashes are airborne substances such as toxic pesticides which you may have unknowingly added into your colonies. To avoid crashes caused by poisonous substances, 
Make sure you are thoroughly cleaning any fruit and vegetables before feeding them to your isopods. And make sure the leaf litter and other natural materials you are using has not been harvested from environments where insecticides and pesticides have been used. And believe it or not, some vegetables such as potato, tomato and eggplant can also cause colony crashes. When these vegetables rot, they produce two toxic gases, solanine and carbon dioxide. High levels of these substances will practically gas your colonies to death. And that marks the end of this video. I hope you have learned a thing or two that will allow your isopod colonies to thrive from this day onwards. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next video which will be all about the external anatomy of the female giant prickly stick insect.